In this lesson, we will learn how to animate with constraints. Now, constraints are really neat. They allow us to lock down an object's transformations to be controlled by another object. And then what's also cool is that we can go ahead and set up multiple source objects that should influence the constraint object. So let's say if we wanted the constraint object to move to object A at a certain point, and then shift over to object B, and then perhaps object C after a certain time. Well, we can do that all with constraints. Now we're going to take a look at an example of this to finish out this lesson. You'll notice that we have the second platform that's animated and it starts to kind of fly off after it rotates. Now what we'll do is work with a certain constraint that will allow us to control an object's position and rotation to make sure that it will follow our platform. Let's say we go ahead and get to it. We'll go ahead and show our control objects. We'll then grab Anim Transport and we'll bring it over to the second platform. Once we've done that, we're then ready to constrain the tank. We would first grab the object that should control it. This is known as the source object. And then we would shift select the object that we would like to constrain, or the target object. Now, we can go to our constraint menu, and then we'll head over to the parent constraint and go to the option box. Now, before I continue, I'd like to point out that we cover the constraints under the constraint menu set and depth in our reference library on the constraint menu. So if you'd like to learn more about these tools and creative ways they can be used, feel free to take a look at that course. I'll go ahead and jump back to the parent constraint option box. Let's go ahead and head over to edit and choose reset settings. You'll notice that when we do that, maintain offset is on by default. Now this is great for this constraint because chances are you'll want to make sure that the object that you constrain will not shift to the source object's position and oftentimes orientation as well. So a lot of times you'll just want to keep the constraint object exactly where it's at before the constraint is applied because what happens is if we turn off maintain offset and we click apply you can see how the constraint object will shift to the position and orientation of the object that we're constraining to. So in this case, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and press the Z key to undo back. What we'll now do is turn on maintain offset and then click add. So take a look. Our constraint object will stay exactly where we've placed it. How cool. And watch this. We can now grab the platform and we can start to move it. Super cool. We could also start to rotate, but we cannot scale. There is a special constraint for that, and it's known as the scale constraint. <laughs> All right, sweet. So let's say we go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and scrub and take a look at what happens in the animation now. Take a look. The treads, they start to move as the platform flies off, and that's simply due to how the tread system on the tank has been set up it looks at the transformations of Anim Transport to determine how the tread should rotate. In this case, what we want to do is disable the tread system so that this rotation will not occur. So let's go ahead and set this up. We'll grab the outer controls on either side of the tank, and we'll go to the part of the animation just before the platform starts to rotate. So just before this movement initializes, we'll go ahead and make sure we turn off the tread system. Let's go to frame 25. We'll go to our active parameter. We'll right click and choose key selected. Now let's go to frame 26. And let's go ahead and set this to off. Fantastic. So you'll now notice that the treads will not rotate as the platform flies away. Nice. Now what we need to do is make sure that our tank will drive over to this second platform. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll go ahead and grab Anim Transport. And again on frame 25, let's go ahead and press the S key so we can save keyframes on our keyboard channels. And when we do, take a look at what happens. We actually create a brand new attribute known as Blend Parent. 
So this is a blending system that allows us to blend between hand keyed animation and our constraints control. So it's really neat. Now what we'll do is make sure that the blend parent is set to a weight of 1 on frame 25 because watch this with it set to 0 there's no control it's off right now. So on frame 25 let's go ahead and set the blend parent to 1 and we'll right click and choose key selected. Now let's say we move to frame 1 and we'll set the blend parent to 0. We'll also set the translate Z of this control to 0 as well. So watch what happens now. The tank is going to drive over to the second platform and then it will be taken away. How cool! So we've managed to finish out this scene in just a few steps by working with the very robust parent constraint in Maya. Again, if you'd like to learn more about constraints, I'd highly recommend you have a look at our reference library on the constraint menu.